time now for our rants and raves of the week, starting with you, Dan. Well, I have a rant, and I'm not even sure who to direct it to. I'm <laughs> ranting about the situation. But the Worcester Telegram and Gazette reported today that, uh, that the only local buyers for the paper, John Henry acquired it when he bought the Boston Globe and he's trying to sell it. Uh, he's, John Henry has said he'd like to sell it to local people. The only local group that was interested in buying it has withdrawn from the bidding. And now it's not clear whether John Henry might keep it, as he said he might, or sell it to a national chain, which he had said he was reluctant to do. Uh, there are some national chains that are better than others out there, obviously, but I would love to see any good, important paper like that in the mm. hands of, of local owners who understand the community. Right now, it's not looking too good, and I hope another local uh, bidder steps forward. Mm. Me too. All right, George, what do you got? Well, I'm so glad we did this uh, news judgment uh, little segment because... Uh, uh, you know, call me a funny dud, but uh, <laughs> I, uh, I noticed uh, that the Globe, and I think we have a graphic here to show it, uh, on Tuesday put a uh, basically a dog poop story above oh, the yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, you know, this is uh, this is at a time when uh, you know uh, Crimea is on the on the verge of being annexed, and uh, and he, and I just <clears throat> it just struck me as perhaps a little silly, and maybe perhaps. Uh, driven a little by uh, the need always to have like a really offbeat talker, yeah. but the, but I just thought the timing of it was a little bizarre, and I think maybe it was driven by this most email or what have you. But the story in itself was interesting. I mean, yeah, it was uh, about forensics. They were going to take samples of dog poop from every I mean, dog in town, it, well, and they, then when you left your pile was, somewhere, was, they're going to track it you. It was down. about an animal control officer who wanted to do it, but it was like a, it was almost you know, but he had not close to doing it. I but, want to do it in my neighborhood. But so. Right? so <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, so I think so. I think it was a test, but I just thought the timing of it was a little bizarre. Loved it. All right, Kelly. Go. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I have a rave for the New York Times. Uh, you know, they're the, the the king of corrections, and they should be. So let's take a look at what they did in the news right now. Is the story of Solomon Northup. He is the man who was free and recaptured and taken into slavery, and his his story was made into a movie. Twelve Years a Slave just won the Academy Award. Um, they went back in their archives and discovered that they had misspelled his name several times oh. in the same article. So it, here it's spelled Northrup. Oh. They have another one where it's North R-O-P. It's oh. North Up, no R. And so they corrected it. And so now wow, the eighth, all these years yeah, later. all these years later, that's the New York Times. They stay on it. <laughs> that's a good one. I that like is a that. good one. Yeah. All right, Kara, what do you got? Um, my rant is for coverage of CPAC. So you've oh, seen yeah. a bunch of conservatives descending on Washington this week to meet. And, you know, CNN has built it as, like, this is where the 2016, you know, contenders. First of all, there is no reason to believe that either the nominee or you know, of course, the president is ever gets the imprimatur of the most conservative people in the party. We certainly haven't seen that in recent elections. And let's take a look at what uh, CPAC has looked like. Yes, that's ah, right. Yeah. Not a lot of people showed up for a lot of the speeches. I've been watching it a little bit on C-SPAN because wow. that's what I do in my spare time. And, you know, it's interesting. It gets all this coverage. Yeah. I'd like to know how many people really showed up to go to this convention, and it turns out not a whole heck of a lot. I'll bet Ollie North sold it out. <laughs> okay, well, or, or I Mitch McConnell with full. his gun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe. I maybe. thought it was full, so this is a surprise. I know, to well, me. it's yeah. interesting because they have big deal yeah. people, and then they'll pan the audience, and you are like, wait, <laughs> yeah. where are the conservatives? Wow. All okay. right, I've got a rant. <laughs> unfortunately, for NBC News, who this week are touting an exclusive interview with the parents and relatives of Riva Steenkamp, mm -hmm. who was the uh, woman who was accidentally <coughs> murdered by uh, Oscar Pistorius, you know, and they, they paid for this material. They paid $100,000 for the rights to images and that kind of thing. That, what images? These are straightforward interviews that are appearing on the Today Show. I don't think Brian Williams has done it, but all the other shows have. They, they, they bought it, and this is not the first time. They've done it three or four times in the past. This is just another in a long history. A, you know, checkbook journalism. Most of the major news organizations are out of this business now, but NBC has been consistently in it. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Too bad. 